how to integrate Atlas with Jenkins. There are numerous tools that you can use to manage changes for database schemas. One of those tools is called Atlas. In this video, we're going to use Atlas to manage one of our databases along with Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.375.1. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has the Atlas CLI installed on it. Also on this controller, I have a job defined that points at a Jenkins file defined in a sample repository. And finally, I have a MariaDB instance. Now currently, Atlas only works with MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, and SQLite. So if you're not using one of those databases, Atlas probably isn't the tool for you right now. But if you are using one of those databases, follow along and let's see how Atlas can help you out. Let's go ahead and log in to our MariaDB instance and take a look at it. So let's say MariaDB, I've got a user named user1, and I have a password of password1. Now obviously your password's gonna be better than that. Within this database, I have a database named DB1. If we'll go ahead and take a look at this database, we'll do a show tables, and we'll see that we have one table called users. And if we describe the table users, then what we're gonna see is we have two fields defined. We have an ID and a name. Now, before we go take a look at the Atlas CLI, let's go take a look at the getting started or the quick start for Atlas. You can look at this at atlasgo.io and then getting started. First thing you're gonna to need to do is install the CLI. You're gonna need access to a database. And in this example, as we're following through, I'm using this table as the example, and we'll do a couple of variations of this getting started. The first thing that we'll want to do is inspect our database. Now, we went into MariaDB and did a describe of users, but let's use the Atlas CLI and see what it sees. So let's go into our agent, because this is where we have Atlas installed. In fact, I'll type Atlas version, and we can see that we currently have Atlas version 0.9.1 installed. Now, in order to see what Atlas sees, we need to run Atlas schema inspect. We'll pass in the URL. We'll specify what database type we want to use. In our case, it's gonna be MariaDB. We give it a username and password. We give it the server name that the database is installed on, the port, and then whatever the database name is. Now, I can go ahead and redirect out to a file name, but in our example here, we're just gonna take a look at what the output is. So let's go back over to our agent and let's run our Atlas schema inspect. So we'll say Atlas schema inspect. We have MariaDB, the username, user one, the password, password one. MariaDB is actually the host name for this server. We give it the default port, which is 3306. And the database name, which we just looked at over here, is DB1, so we'll output DB1. And when we hit enter, we see the definition for the user's table, and we also see a definition for the schema for DB1. Now, if you'll notice this output here, we're gonna go into the sample repository. We have a Jenkins file, we'll take a look at that in just a moment, but let's take a look at schema HCL. And if you notice here, we have table users and our schema DB1. This is the exact same definition as we see in our output right here. So prior to starting, I did the Atlas schema inspect, exported that out and put it into my Git repository. Now let's go ahead and go back over to our Jenkins file and take a look at what that definition is. So what we have is we're gonna run on agent any, which since we only have a single agent defined and we have Atlas CLI, I know that's the agent that I'm gonna be using. We've set up credentials for MariaDB creds. Now what we saw when we did Atlas schema inspect is that we were hard coding in the username and password and we don't wanna do that, especially in a Jenkins file. And since this is a username password type credential, which we'll take a look at, we're able to go ahead and use the special values for underscore USR and underscore PSW in our Jenkins file. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and verify that Atlas is installed because if for some reason Atlas wasn't installed, I want to go ahead and have my pipeline fail. Then what I want to do is apply the schema. So we'll say Atlas schema apply. Now, before we did Atlas schema inspect, we'll say dash dash URL, now in our example, we used dash u, but in our case here, but all dash u means is that it is a shortcut for dash dash URL. We'll say MariaDB, we'll give it the credentials. We're gonna point it at the server MariaDB. We'll define our port and then whatever database we want to run against. Now the apply that we're going to use is from file. There's different protocols you can use to address files, but we're just gonna use the simple one, schema HCL, because that's defined in our repository. And then finally, we're adding in this flag, auto approve. 
If you fail to add this flag during your Jenkins file, then what would happen is the Atlas CLI would start up and then would hang because it's waiting for you to approve that. So what we want to do is go ahead and auto approve the application of schema HCL. And then finally, after the apply is done, we want to go ahead and run an inspect one more time to see what changes happened to our database. So let's go ahead and go over to our Jenkins controller. And as I said, we have credentials set up. So if we take a look at manage Jenkins, manage credentials, and we can see that we have the MariaDB creds credential set up. And if we go in and look at the update for it, we can see that it's a username and password. We don't need to make any changes to this because we already have user one set up as the user and password one set up as the password. If we take a look at the job definition real quick, this is just a pipeline job type and we're pointing it at our sample repository. We're pointing at the main branch and specifying Jenkins file. Just a very simple, basic setup for a pipeline job. So let's go ahead and go back to Atlas DB1 and let's click on build now. And as the job runs, what we're going to see is that it's going to first verify that Atlas is installed. We'll see Atlas version and it should reflect 0.9.1, which it does. And then we apply the schema. We can see dash dash URL. We see our username and password are masked out. And then it gives us the answer, schema is synced, no changes to be made. So it was able to compare the schema HCL that's defined in our repository against the actual schema inside of the MariaDB database. And then we run the inspect one more time and we can see that the definition is exactly the same as it was before. So now let's go ahead and go add a column to our schema HCL file and see how that reflects back into our database. So we'll click on schema HCL, we'll click on edit, and let's just add a basic column here. We'll copy the name value that's here We'll just paste it over again. And let's say the new column name is going to be called address. We'll leave it null, varcar100 is fine just for this example. And let's click on commit changes. And then let's go back over to our job and let's run this job one time. And what we should be able to see here in this run in number 10 is we now see our version. We say the schema apply and it tells us what the plan changes are. So it's going in and diffing what the HCL file has against the actual definition within the database. So we can see that it's going to alter the table DB1 users and add a new column varcar100, making it null. And then when we run the inspect, we can see that the address field is there. Let's go back into our definition here for describe users. Let's run this again. And we can see that ID, name, and address are all defined right there. Now let's go back over into the getting started for Atlas. And in their example, they add in a blog post table. Let's go ahead and copy this blog post table, and we're going to add this into our schema HCL definition. So we'll go back over here to schema HCL, we'll click on edit, and right below this user's definition for the user's table, we're gonna add in blog post. Now, there's a little bit of a difference here because in the example that was used within getting started, their schema definition is pointing at schema.example. But in our example, it's schema.db1. So let's go ahead and change this to db1 because the definition of our schema is down here at line 45. So we want that to be matching within this schema. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back over to our job. Let's run this one more time. If we take a look at the output of job run 11, we'll see the schema apply again. The plan changes are create the blog post table, and then we can inspect it and see all the new fields and the new table that were added. And if we go back over to our console and we say show tables, we'll see now that we have a blog post table. And if I describe blog post, then we see the definition of the blog post table. Now, what happens if I want to just go ahead and remove that table? I've decided that, you know what? I really didn't need that table. That's actually coming in a more future release. And I don't want to go ahead and pollute my database with it right now. Well, all I have to do is go back into my schema HCL and delete out that definition. So let's go back over to GitHub. Let's edit this file one more time and let's remove our blog post table. So we will go through the bottom of the blog post table. So now all we have left is the users table and the DB1 schema. And in fact, let's go ahead and remove this address field that I added. Let's go ahead and click on commit changes and let's go back over to our controller and let's run this job one more time. When we take a look at the output of this next run, what we're going to see is the schema apply. First off, 
we're going to be dropping the blog post table, and we're going to be modifying the users table by dropping the column address. So when we run the inspect one more time, we can see that we just have the ID and name fields. If we go back over to our console, what we can see here is if we do a show tables, we only have the users table, so the blog post table is gone. And if we describe users one more time, then what we'll see is that we're back down to just the ID and name columns. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.